It doesn't surprise me that there's a high turnover. I mean, California, we have the whole Calvary Chapel thing. Are you guys familiar with them? Chuck Smith, Calvary Chapel? Um, not yeah. specifically, but we probably Maybe. know the, the, the type, yeah. Well, they've been around since the 70s or so. I'm only 32. But what I mean is, it seems like wherever you go, the mega churches are kind of different. Out here, they're cool churches. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, they're, they're just like that here, too. Yeah. I, I mean, they're like you see signs on billboards with like a pair of grungy jeans on, on legs and then yeah. there's a guitar lying around. And I, I got a flyer. Like, come to our church. Uh -huh. I got a flyer from a, a, a it's, I think it's a wannabe megachurch. It's a new church here like in my end of town, south of town. Um, you know, and, and the front of the flyer said on it in big red sort of MTV-ish looking letters, church sucks. That was their sales pitch for the, to, for bringing me to their church, oh and on God. the back, it, and on the back, then it was like, yeah, but but our church is cool, right? And you can you can wear your jeans with holes in them and bring your iPod because you know because it totally rocks here, right? That's how yeah. they're that's how they're selling it. It, so, it comes right. across as a bunch of. I should bring that flyer. As, I kept that flyer. It I'll comes it. across as a bunch of old guys in suits trying to figure out how to talk to the teen demographic. Precisely. Yeah. And so it's all it's so uh, the you know the mega churches are essentially I think. <laughs> In a sense, you can sort of deplore them because they're big and they're everywhere and they're like, oh, you know, but, uh, but at the same time, I kind of have to give them props for just being honest about what they are, which is a multi-million dollar business. It is. It's a you business. Know. Now, have you guys ever, they have this corny thing out here. They have a, in fact, you're just making got mad. They have a Christian books, Christian clothing store inside the mall here in San Diego. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they do. They have a, a Christian, I don't know if Marilyn's ever told you that before. Well, there, there's all kinds I mean, of Christian. I mean, you'll you'll find Christian coffee shops and Christian bookstores and this and that. And the yeah, other. there and there's a Christian to, yellow pages here. I mean, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So but, it's, um, they it's have around. a thing called N O T W, and it's like it looks so corny. It says not of this world. They they put it oh, on the cars yeah. and stuff. And, and it all looks gangster with the t-shirts. Yeah, we know. It's again, it's 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 a business. It's a business. It is. And, and oh. they're at least they're being honest about we're just making money here. You know, so yeah. I bet sense, we I could a, really get some big business from those yeah. kids today with their hippity yeah. hop. Right. Well, and you know what I wanted to ask you too is, um, why does a lot of people grow up Catholic, right? But then they change to these mega churches. Why do a lot of people leave the Catholic church and go to those mega churches? Oh, we don't know and we don't care. I mean, because marketing works. Yeah. If marketing it didn't, works. they wouldn't do it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but listen, we got to get to our next guy. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks yeah. for calling. Dude. Bye. Uh, mm. Um. And actually, I I was just remembering. Uh, you know, Wretched Radio, what's that guy's name? Todd Friel. Yes, okay. Todd Friel. I, I listened to him once do a big rant about Veggie Tales. <laughs> um, and, and his thing there was that, oh, sure, it's nice to get the kids in, uh, you know, uh -huh. thinking that this is all nice, happy stuff. But then they grow up and they're like used to thinking of Jesus in the same context as Barney the Dinosaur and, and you know, their cartoons. And then, and then that but makes yes, them more likely to turn away from the church. Yes, that's <laughs> the whole point, because yeah. that's what Jesus is. He's a storybook character. Yeah, yeah, and and I mean my my thing is you know he he's all worried about them making kids think of him that way, and it's like no 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 they're catering to them, mm -hmm. <laughs> because church is already dull unless you unless you mm -hmm. make up these silly stories about them, uh, and it's not and you know ultimately you're damned if you do damned if you don't because if you keep the boring stories then you're gonna lose members because your church is lame, and mm -hmm. if you just make them sound hip then uh you know or you know you certainly don't want to encourage critical thinking because that'll oh, turn them away so. yeah yeah so uh, anyway uh i think this may be our last call and if you're in austin you should join it totally join us yes after come to, to supper red gills and i'll bring that there. flyer next time i'm on the show I'll, I'll, yep or i'll scan it and i'll put it on the blog that's all i'll do uh logan in otherwise. north carolina yeah. logan are you there Hi. Can hey. you guys hear me all right? You're Hi. on, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, I was just wanting to ask you guys how you dealt with people presenting you with arguments of their faith um, from miracle. And um, because, like, I just had a, an evangelical Christian come up to me just last night, um, you know, trying to convert me to Christianity and whatnot. And his exclusive argument was arguments from miracle. And basically what I had to do was I had to... Um, like he would present me with one of his, you know, uh, vastly unsupported claims, and uh, well, I give us like, what did he say? What did he say? Yeah. Uh, well, like, like for example, he would just say, um, 
uh, one of my friends, um, uh, you know, had a a leg that was shorter than the other one, and uh, she watched it grow, you know, like a, a whole foot. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and you know, just just uh-huh. these just these wild sort of claims, and um, you know, I basically had to go through each one of his claims one by one and give an explanation for. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Uh, uh- I'll tell you a technique that I learned from Jeff. I like it very much. Okay. When somebody comes at you, and and they're going to want to, like, throw as much stuff Mm -hmm. at you as you can because they know that your time is limited and they can take 30 seconds to say something and you have to, like, take 10 minutes to research it. Right. And and you just don't have the time for that. When you get somebody doing that, the the first thing you need to say is, okay, hit me with your single very best miracle. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the one thing that is the most convincing? Then you deal with that one, and then they try to change the subject, and you say, hang on, hang on. If your best miracle wasn't good enough, then why are you trying to bring up a different one? Yeah. you, you, know, you got to keep it focused, is yeah, what I'm saying. You brought your A game, it failed, your B game is not going to work. You know? um, yeah. But <laughs> it's, um, you're dealing with an irrational thinker there, right? I mean, you're dealing with someone who has just convinced himself uh, you know that uh, these unusual, miraculous events occur. He knows that it, you know <coughs> he knows that he can't prove them. He must know that he can't prove these things happen to right. you. I mean, how does he? Yeah. Say, you know, it all comes down to, you know, just tell him. Okay, you're making extraordinary claims. They require extraordinary evidence. Um, you know, how how do I know that any of these things you're telling me actually happened? You know, he may bring up prayer uh, as a thing. It's like, oh, well, somebody prayed that their mother would be cured from cancer, and then their mother was cured from cancer. And you're like, okay, well, uh, what about all the other people who have cancer? And they get prayed for, and then they don't get cured from their cancer. Well, so does a God mean that he just decided to like this one cancer victim on this particular day and not the millions of others? Um, you know, miracles are just very selective things that... Um, and yeah. as Russell said, they'll just hit you with so many of them that you can't refu- possibly refute them all. We're running out of time, oh, so drats. I'm going to have to let you go. But, I mean, the sure. one thing that I want to leave this on is that you shouldn't let anybody change the subject without strongly making a note of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, even if it's just to say, I acknowledge that you're changing the subject. Can we agree that that one wasn't good enough? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you at ThreadGills. TV at atheist-community.org is the address if you didn't get it on today. Thanks for a great show. Could have used some more uh, contradictory callers, but but still always fun to be on with you, Martin. Yeah, See you likewise, later. Russell. Definitely. <laughs>